Former National Security Council Director Fiona Hill became a household name during her deposition for Donald Trump's first impeachment. Her fearless, straightforward, no-nonsense testimony on both Trump's actions and diplomatic issues has made Hill one of the nation's most respected experts on international relations, especially when it comes to all things Russia. Unfortunately, in a new interview with Politico, Hill is bringing equally blunt about what's happening in Eastern Europe. This is a great power conflict, said Hill. The third great power conflict in the European space in a little over a century. It's the end of the existing world order. Our world is not going to be the same as it was before. The speakers itself is hidden behind a clickbait headline about Elon Musk. But while Hill does have something to say about the lack of Putin to guys like Musk or Trump, Putin plays the egos of big sound, gives them a sense that they can enter a role. But in reality, they're just direct transmitters of messages from Vladimir Putin. Quote, the more important message is that the battle going on in Ukraine isn't a fight about who will control Crimea. It's about who will own the fly. It was during that deposition for Trump's first impeachment that Hill called Trump's blackmail call to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky really kind of my worst fears and nightmares, in terms of an effort not meant to subvert the national security process but to try to subvert what really should be a diplomatic effort. Hill's insightful, informed discussion of the issues, and her explanation of how Russia and Ukraine both saw Trump's efforts to manipulate the situation for his own benefit, made her a standout witness. In later interviews, Hill explained how she warned Trump that Vladimir Putin actually wants to use nuclear weapons and that Russia's threats to Ukraine couldn't be ignored, but needed to be used with a major international response. This time, what Hill has to say isn't all about Putin's ability to manipulate men who are easily accessed, but about how Putin himself has all the illegal, unprovoked invasion of Ukraine in a way that means the U.S. NATO, and the world can't afford to step back. As she points out, a hallmark of Putin is that when something he does turns out to be a failure, he doesn't step away, he doubles down. Quote, Putin, always use the more extreme step in his range of options, said Hill, the one that actually cuts off other alternatives. Putin has often related an experience he had as a kid when he trapped a rat in a corner in the apartment building he lived in, in Leningrad, and the rat shocked him by jumping out and fighting back. It says something that Putin identifies with that rat. The Russian dictator insists on fighting even then. Dear in any case, he's also the person who puts himself in the corner. In spite of extraordinarily high casualties, Hill notes that some estimates now show Russian losses at over 90,000. Putin isn't taking steps to reduce future casualties. Instead he's throwing more bodies at the situation. Russia ran through many of its best trained, best equipped forces in the opening weeks of the war. Now it is mobilizing untrained men. Most of them out of shape. Many of them elderly or ill and forcing them to the front with either the slightest nod toward training. The families of need of those sounds were recruited, following Putin's big mobilization speech. Have already received death notices. For me, Putin has launched himself into a no-win situation. But he's unwilling, and even incapable, of stepping away. His only end game is one of which he leaves on his own terms. Putin doesn't just want to win the USA. He wants to crush Ukraine. To cow people into submission. Erase their culture. Obliterate their boundaries into Novorossiya. And remove Ukraine from the map and from global affairs. And just because what's happening in Ukraine doesn't fit the image people have for a World War E. One dominated by an exchange of strategic nuclear weapons. That doesn't mean what's happening is any more room than the events that generated past world out. Now we're having a hard time learning to terms with what we're dealing with here. Said Hill. This is a great power conflict.
the third great power conflict in the generous space in a little over a century. It's the end of the existing world order. Our world is not going to be the same as it was before. Putin doesn't accept the boundaries of the 1280 as they are now this. He's willing to drag the world into food shortage and an economic crisis. And he's willing to at least threaten nuclear war to ensure that the features are redrawn in his favor. These actions and desires are indistinguishable from those that drove World War I and World War E. Just like the men who kicked off those wars. Putin expected things to go easily. In his favor. I'm sure Putin thought he would have been unassailable with a humming. Victorious war. Said Hill. Ukraine would be back in the fold. And then probably after that. Belarus. But as well. Perhaps. There would have been a reframing of the next phase of Putin as the great Tsar of a reconstituted. Rusky Maror, Russian world. Only that didn't happen. But it still could. If the U. S. and other allies falter in their shape of winding. Hill. This goes back to the point I had to use when I testified at the first impeachment trial against. President Trump. There's a direct line between that episode and now. Putin has managed to seed hostile sentiment toward Ukraine. Even if people think these are criticizing Ukraine for their own domestic political purposes. Because they want to claim that the Biden administration is giving too much support for Ukraine. Instead of giving more support to Americans. I.e. They're replaying the targeted messaging that Vladimir Putin has very carefully fed into our political arena. People may think that they're acting independently, but they are echoing the Kremlin's propaganda. The full discussion with Hill is definitely worth a read. Meanwhile in Russia, anger and disappointment fill the studio, as the viewers are being prepared for the loss of wires and other territories. Host Olga Skabiva bitterly questions why Russia was so wrong in the beginning. Believing that Zelensky would run NATO would end hesitate. Pick.twitter.com slash v. Julia Davis. At Julia Davis News. October 19th. 2022 if accurate. This may be less than a quarter of the pre-war population. Take note. Right bank in this case means on the moment when looking downstream. So the west bank of the Dnipro River at Kherson is also the right bank. About 50 to 60,000 residents of the right bank of the Kherson region are willing to be transported to the left bank of the Dnieper. It may take about a distance. Acting Governor Saldo said on the air of Saloviov Live Pick.twitter.com slash JJM4 Kukview 3R. Noel Region Letter E Region Letter U Region Letter U Region Letter A. At Noel Reports. October 19th. 2022 Ukrainian forces are still busy in Kherson. Thread, link in the last longer. Together with at CXEMU and at Kofsyani we found a photo and the video of a Russian soldiers and equipment being evacuated from the right out of Dnipro River to Nova Kahovka by ferry. So go unloaded to the right bank at least since October. 8th. Pick.twitter.com slash ru50003 mike. Mark Krutov, at Cromark, October 19th, 2022 update unclear how this card to everything else going on. But if collaborators and Russian officials are loading onto those boats, the control of the occupation government may already be breaking down, particularly if the panic level is high. News from Hash Kherson City. Very heavy gunfights all around the Hash Shumansky district this evening. We will try to keep you up to date. Hash Slava Ukraini hash Freakerson at Delangelio at Bayraktar underscore one love pick dot twitter dot com slash ifkadunpit. NL War Tracker. At NL War Tracker. October 19th, 2022 update. 11.15 p.m. at really hard to count but there are at least 12 units of YPR 765. Hash Ukraine pick dot twitter dot com slash r eight do zero ftk tendar at tendar october nineteenth twenty twenty two